Hello everybody, welcome to Friday's live stream. Familiar face? It's me, Marissa. Hello, hello. It has been so long since I've done an introduction for our lovely Friday lives because they've always been, that's been taken such great care of here at Upbeat Artworks. And they're so fun. I'm always across the hall at Studio Central during these times. So sometimes, normally when Ollie has to run somewhere else, Ollie's at Artbeat today. Hi, Ollie, if you're watching. You should be. Uh, I'm, <laughs> I'm always very jealous. I always want to join in and um, see what Kate's doing and see what folks are doing here at Upbeat because it's always different. It's always a little bit different than what goes on at Studio Central. Um, but of course, across the hall at Studio Central, we have our um, art workshops starting at two. So you could watch this and if you're close by and you're like, I want to do art with people, you can zoom over and join us for our, our workshop there. I believe we're doing painting today with Logan. That's what we're doing at Studio Central. But here today, we're doing painting as well. It's great. You're gonna have me and Kate bantering back and forth at each other while we're painting some um, trees, some Winnipeg trees, and you get a little bit of Ollie because the photos taken that we're using as reference were taken by the lovely photographer extraordinaire, Ollie. So thank you for that. Um, first things first, the best part about being here in Upbeat Artworks where you can purchase so many beautiful pieces by our talented alumni artists, uh, but you can also admire them too. We feature, feature artists every time. So to tell us about the feature is none other than Kate. Hi, Kate. I'm Marissa. I didn't see you today yet. Oh, wow. First time ever. <laughs> nice, nice seeing you. <laughs> nice seeing you. Okay, uh, so uh, we'll start from the book launch, preparation for the book launch. It's happening on the 24th, mm -hmm. the upcoming Tuesday. And uh, everyone's invited to RSVP to just show up. Uh, I just want to talk a little bit about uh, the books themselves. These are called Arctic Animals. And I can show one of them, and then you are very welcome to come and check on more. Uh, Arctic Annual 10. So you can see the title is all over. Just 10. Such a cool pattern. And this is the annual from a uh, group I was in, but there are two biannual groups in one year. And at the completion of the show, there is graduation show, it's always beautiful. And I caught a very good time when uh, the part that was still there, mm -hmm. when music, it, it was a very great, like a, a great event for, for me and for our group. And also there are two groups that meet together and uh, um, they meet together, sure they meet together afterwards, but the first meaningful milestone is actually printing the annual. Someone took lots of thought uh, and put into this book and it's not one person it's people who contributed their thoughts about what was going on the RD program and also uh, photographers that took great pictures and artists who produced the art pieces yeah at the, uh, at the studio at uh, 62 Albert Street and also, uh, you can see there are uh, quotes for contents. Uh, so I'll just go through the book really briefly. There is a uh, Kyla Becker quote here, and it's, art has been an important part of my recovery. Each piece I create represents a part of that journey. Words by Kyla Becker. We do not forget, we, we talk about mental health, and we talk about art, that is something that uh, comes out uh, when someone recovers and knows, well, let's say knows a lot. Yeah. Has a lot of knowledge. Definitely, definitely. Can you flip um, through and show some of the pictures there? Yeah. So this is Nigel's. Yeah. And it's always nice to read Nigel's words. Oh, definitely. It's about Pseudo Central. Uh, the way it was for then, mm -hmm. not right now, but you can see how it was. 
we got words from Brian Bowman, Sherwin Rogers, Peter McConville, Dr. John Allen Oli, and we have artworks from Holy Ann's, which are amazing. We don't mm -hmm. have any artworks from Holy except the one in the store. I know her pieces are so cool. So yeah, these books, um, they'll go through the different, like just a small snapshot of the artist's work once they're, um, they were in that, their time at the artist in residency program. So it's a great little capsule of everybody's pieces and a published book. You're, you're in a published book following that. Um, and this is, this, we're flipping through, this is your book, correct, Kate? Um, this is not my book. Oh. This is the book from the display here. Oh, just the display. Home. Okay. No, that's as fair. You can see a little piece of what we're doing during the program. We met together and had Raku being, uh, Raku firing is quite a process. You can see pieces produced at the studio. We had the little pottery, um, pottery station there. Yeah. So going on the wheel as well. David Henry, I just want to pay a lot of attention mm -hmm. to his paintings. Yeah, I, I, oh, well, who's, who's me. that? This is me, wow. and this painting is still at oh, yeah. Central. And yeah. I do remember how it was taken to be, to, it was rented for a movie. Whoa. <laughs> so that was quite an That's really, really cool. Uh, experience, amazing words from Lauren. Yeah, really cool. A lot of um, portraits in the, this group. A lot of like people, pa paintings of people and, and depictions of that. And then uh, here starts the group that was after us. Mm. So we were the first group and the same here we have another group. Mm -hmm. So I will just go to the artist, Nina, Sarah, or Sarah. Now it's Sarah. Mm -hmm. uh, Roger. Isabel. Oh, I love her work Isabel too. Isabel generously donated mm -hmm. a lot of her mm -hmm. to, you, to art and studio. Lodico just, had just a has a it show. Just has a show. There, it is still there. Yeah, I think it is today the last day. Check them. Yeah. Um, yeah, today is the last day. You have until five o'clock to go to um, Artbeat to see that. And the reason we're featuring these is. We have our newest group um, going to have the launch here. Here's our, our little ad for it. The newest book called Beyonder. So you can see the artists here. We have a little um, Eventbrite um, information that you can find on our website. Um, but this will be next Tuesday, and this will be at the Forks Market in the EQ3 Lounge upstairs. Um, very exciting and with that. I would quickly read my yeah. My writing is quite a writing. Okay, so the book 10, I did not go with a simple, I just wrote it in words. Uh, there are two groups and we chose names. So our group's name was Shameless. And it was a lot about stigma. There is a statement about uh, writing stigma uh, from Nigel. And just being aware of it, that it's still there. Crazy Eight was the second group. And uh, my writing is not unique. It just follows the procedure of writing. Mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. So the 10th installment of the Artbeat Studio Annual profiles 17 diverse artists from the studio's 19th and 20th biannual exhibitions. I was saying group 29, I don't know why. Oh, I added well, 10, but it's a 19. <laughs> Uh, 10, RB Annual features a beautiful co collection of artworks, including acrylics, marker, paint marker, photography, pottery, and more. Mm, wonderful. Great. Well, that's awesome. Thank you for sharing that, Kate. Um, I'm just doing a little pan around the room here. We have so many new art pieces to come by and check out. New work behind the desk there some really great pieces there's a cool piece over on the side there by Kaizek one of the 
newest um, alumni artists that have come out of the presidency. There's some more work. And then there's um, some great work by uh, Stephanie Phillips right there, that mushroom piece. Oh, so cool. And we can mention people like Paris. Uh, mm hmm. And then the piece that is called Greed from Raven. Yes. Oh, the Raven. Raven's Raven. All right. I think uh, it's I time we get going. Rock. This is the treasure I ran out of big rocks and I have two or three left. So this is the biggest I could find. So wow. this is for a collaboration for Pseudo Central. Ooh. So I just made a mark here and yeah. anyone can add their element and then it will go in the I know what I'm doing and later. It might be even the Halloween party that is going to yeah. next week. Next week? Uh, two weeks from now. Two on weeks. Halloween. It's on a Tuesday this uh this year, so Tuesday and Halloween. Well. So that's I'm um, passing to Marisa. And finally, we're getting to mm. the photographs that Oli took. Yeah. In the bag. Oli did not take a trip anywhere else because there were plenty of beautiful trees in Winnipeg. It was hard to find a great combination mm -hmm. of all colors because when we're discussing that, a lot of trees were still green or out of leaves for some mm. reason. Weird. So, uh, these are the photographs we got. Oh, love the colors there. The red with the yellow. You can see the combination that just started turning. Mm -hmm. So much detail in that tree there. Really, this really is cool. This the tree that I'm picking for certain reasons. Oh, cool. oh my reasons goodness, a little, <laughs> the little tree house. I've always wanted one of those. And cool, oh, so much detail with those branches there. And then the little bird right here. Mm. Not as anymore, but. It's growing. This is the one I think I'm gonna paint. We'll see what I can do. I just love how yellow, how yellow that is. I don't think I'll put everything that's in the background in in my picture i'll probably do this little pathway because that's quite nice but i'll wait for kate's instruction of what to paint here you go well, here you go thank you you're welcome so this is mine and i can just simply put it here do you want some tape uh yes please. do we have <laughs> Fine. It was slightly curved. Uh, uh, so should I actually start from uh, the sky or I could always add the sand between? We're actually discussing the full series would mm -hmm. be uh, taking the center, whichever we're painting, without the context. Mm -hmm. And then we could always add the context afterwards because we do not have much time during the online demonstration. So a pre-painted could be nice, could be not. Mm -hmm. Some people like it when it's painted on white because it's more visible for the viewer. I would be just painting with, usually uh, when I paint trees, I start from the black if it's dark and then add a little accent of color, but it shouldn't be much in this case. Mm -hmm. So the acrylic is still around acrylic. I just added this pure pumpkin the colors Ooh. when anything else was what I got at home. I love pure pumpkin. So for myself that would be important where I want to start. So you see that this tree is very long. So I would say uh, something like this. What brush are you using? I have a magic brush. <laughs> what does a magic brush mean? 
<laughs> I like the brush that is very Ooh, thin. Ooh, very, very thin. Yeah. I'm a magic brush. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Great. Uh, I do not find a lot of these brushes uh, in the Rama. In the Rama, you can find something that is close to detail brush, but it's not really thin. This one, I honestly do not remember. Oh, okay. So this is from Mustache Art. I bought a package and it was, yeah. Whoa. Mustache. And it's called Firm Round Synthetic. Oh. <laughs> so it's not something I would be paying a lot of attention to because sometimes you buy brush from the same brand and it doesn't work. Yeah, that's true. It, it doesn't matter if that might not be. Like the best brushes probably are taken care of when they all work, but this is not a super expensive. I think that it, it depends on, you know, the brush is one thing, it's how you use it and your techniques that you put with it. So I feel like it's really great to have, you know, a variety of brushes, like some expensive ones, some Dollarama ones. Because um, Dollarama brushes were working for a lot of things, but yeah. not for the detail. Mm -hmm. And then I'd say this brand is okay. Mm -hmm. And if to buy the best brushes, you would go to Artist Emporium, Michaels mm -hmm. again. Yeah. But I did not put too much money into brushes. And you've gotten some good stuff from online too, huh? Mm hmm That's good. Online, uh, it's hard to find a good brush because it might look good and then you receive it. And yeah. And again, I'm not talking about expensive brands. I'm talking about what is more affordable. Mm -hmm. And if you want a great brush that could be once a year, maybe. Yeah. Yeah, and that's a good idea. you can use it for some time and even for a long time, but Treat that yourself. depends on how often you, uh, you use it. So I'm not exactly following what I see because I do not have to. Uh, so I'm saying I'm inspired yeah. by what I see, but it, I just want to keep the main thing. So the main thing is that the uh, tree is tall. It has a lot of branches and there are a lot of branches on each mm. of the branches. That's it. And then I just leave it to non-verbal element. So I do not describe the angle or anything. Mm -hmm. I just think. That was beautiful, Kate, though. <laughs> really like how you're hitting it on there. I have fully not listened to what you said earlier and started painting a sky. Oh, do you think I'm listening to what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm sorry for all you if she was watching and just heard my bird squawk. <laughs> no, I, I was like, oh yeah, you're painting. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna paint too, but I feel like I'm gonna want a background, so I just painted the sky. Because <laughs> I felt like um, I have foliage on mine, like I have a lot of foliage, so that's gonna come in nicely just with like a dry brush after. But I don't want to go in with blue following, so that was kind of my my reasoning for. So let's say I do not paint this exact tree, mm -hmm. obviously, because for that you would need to actually sit down and focus way more. Uh, the You're focus, not focus the right line. now. <laughs> no, no, there is no focus during the line. Whatever you do, you are not expecting the focus. Maybe that's why I'm currently happy with how my painting is turning out because I'm not focusing on it, I'm just doing it. Normally I think I'm over overthinking and I stress myself out over my painting. Logan's gonna be so happy with my painting after this. Sure that we do not see, so what's the focus? We're trying to, uh, so everything is being excluded from what you see except of what you're focusing on. Uh, so I'm trying to focus on some detail mm -hmm. and I'm not looking at anything else mm -hmm. at the moment. So I would never say I can see this part when I paint this. Yeah. So it's side vision, it's nothing uh, that I'm looking at. And also whatever is around it, even the closest branch, I wouldn't see it. It's also helpful that you're, um, that's, that's a really good tip. I like that. I think I'm gonna definitely utilize that. Like having a, putting like one looking at one part of the picture versus trying to look at everything at once while you're painting it's a great tip um i lost my train of thought because i was like yeah that's really good I'm gonna <laughs> also uh the looseness of painting 
Mm. I would say this is loose because I'm not looking at the exact mm. uh, shape of the branch. Yeah. So I just make it the length of it and it might look like it, but again, I'm not, I'm just getting direction of the basic shape of this kind of tree, but it doesn't have to grow exactly the same mm -hmm. way, just the curve the way it is. Oh, I remember what I was saying now. Um, it's awesome the picture you picked for this technique because the like the leaves aren't there, so you really have a really clear um, reference easy. to the branches. Yeah, it's you have easy a really to nice see the branches. And also, it's I think for many uh, beginners, it's mm -hmm. important to see uh, where it starts, mm -hmm. where it ends. And again, I am not saying I'm really good at painting a tree that is in the photograph because um, what what good means. Mm -hmm. For some people, it would be exactly copy what's here, mm -hmm. right? So I'm not choosing this type of wood for myself mm -hmm. because I made choices, right, for the life especially. Uh, during the life, if I make something that does not work or anything, I can always remake it, right? So mm -hmm. I'm letting... Um, it's almost like letting go of like what go your, of your, the focus or stress. Trying not to plan yeah. again, mm -hmm. uh, because when you paint, a planet might be on the way, it's working, and sometimes it completely stops you from mm -hmm. working on things. Just trying to make an exact plan, and sometimes it works, sometimes it reduces um, attention mm -hmm. on what's... Mm -hmm what you need to do. So definitely I'm not getting to the very top, right? So I did not make it small enough to get to the very top. But I was not planning to. So if someone plans to actually capture the whole sky piece mm -hmm. and everything, uh, they will choose a canvas that is higher. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> not. You got you got like a square canvas with a tree. Yeah. So I do not want to focus on this shape of the tree. I want to focus on the branches without getting advanced ideas about this part. Mm -hmm. I just want to capture the curves and focus on the, it's like choosing a task that is enough. Mm -hmm. That's enough. So I don't want to go Yeah, you don't want to over, overwork it or. And then the leaves, you can see the leaves are there, but they are not covering the tree the same way as other leaves, but I can put them afterwards. Mm -hmm. And uh, what I see here could be a combination of brown, uh, a little tiny bit of orange, and uh, a little, the orange you do not see, yeah. orange inside of a brown. <laughs> And then I do see uh, a little tiny bit of white or let's say cream, mm -hmm. something like this. So when you have like a little bit of that color, how would you recommend putting in the color? Like you need the darker first and then- I will start with the black. Okay. And whatever it is darker, you can see a lot of leaves are just black mm -hmm. simply. Yeah. So whichever you see, you would not see any more color in them. Then I would start adding tiny bit of browns. Then on these browns, or they can be pre-mixed beforehand, I would add a little tiny bit of either white, yellow, or orange. But also you can go with gray. So it's basically mixing black and white in different mm -hmm. shades and mixing with browns and oranges. And I do not see I do not see any red here, but if you mix red with uh, brown, you would just get the brown that might work, but not the red by itself, let's say. Mm. And then, yeah, you can have just white here, you can have this. Yeah, it's a nice one. The warm white's really good. And then the oranges can be pure pumpkin, or it could be something like apricot, which works really good for leaves. And this is from Apple Barrel, but I really like this. Mm. Uh, shade, or just simply mixing yellow and red and getting uh, some kind of orange that is not as bright usually, or 
Okay. It should be a special kind of it. So if you are ready to start searching and researching rather than asking mm -hmm. someone, uh, for many people it works better because it's easier to, I don't know, show it as your own experience. Yeah, see, because you also have like different tastes and, pers and like preferences and yeah. your paint and like your color that you, you want. Can never, um, I don't know, it's not something you take for actually thinking mm -hmm. it's too much. It, it is somewhere, yeah. right? But it's not something you memorize really. I do not memorize anything because I'm just used to do things this way. I'm trying, yeah. I'm looking. I bought the cheapest, worst resin I could to try. I think it worked like, out great though. It, like it worked for some folks. Uh, it wasn't the one I oh, brought to Oh, okay. Never mind. Oh, well, I, I can show it with some time. Yeah. So it still works, but it's not something I would, I was not aiming for actually working with, um, um, it, it was not bought for the purpose of um, make a really clear surface, so mm -hmm. it was bought for the base oh, okay. and to try, Yeah. but I wasn't expecting it to be that bad of a quality. <laughs> you never know, you never know what's going to happen. <laughs> with other people is kind of seeing different styles of painting and what works for you and even how that can like compare to other people not that you compare yourself to other people but you learn from from them and so with this tree I actually can mark the leaves that are dark right away on this branch and they're just as you see you cannot see the leaf shape so it just marks spots here and there And that's what many people will see, but I would not use the fan brush that mm -hmm. many artists love using because it makes the process quicker mm -hmm. and it looks better for many people. But again, what's your own technique? What yeah. inspires you? What makes you feel like you're doing things? Yeah. I don't know. I want to feel I actually create my own way mm -hmm. and this is not the way I picked up. Yeah, it works for different people. In my own way, I don't know. I never had enough patience for many things, but the mm. trees, it's something, uh, again, uh, I do not have focus like some other people would, placement, or I just remove it because it's not too important to me. Mm -hmm. You can see where it is in reality. I am not uh, working on actually copying mm -hmm. what's here. And I know the reference is always great to have a reference that inspires you, doesn't have to be. Yeah. Well, I really like what you have going on there. I think it's, um, mm -hmm. I think it's a great like representation of your style of work, like the method that you're starting with. And even if you see, we can make just a big blob uh, where there are a lot of leaves or just random spots and then add detail on top of that. And, and again, I start with just black and I would be adding this little. You see a little tiny spot right here. You see a little tiny spot right yeah. here, which is, uh, I do not see it as wide, definitely. I would not. Some artists would just put a white highlight, a really thick white mm -hmm. line to show there is something going on there, it's lighter. I would use this brush or use a thick brush. I would just take something 
closer, uh, so it won't be just white definitely. So it's barely seen, but it, it makes the difference when you look at it from, yeah. from the distance. And then we could always include some detail behind. I'm not sure I actually want to make it uh, really sharp looking, so I would probably blur mm -hmm. a little bit of that, or I would just paint something different. Because if you see the trees there, you can see it, but you don't pay much attention. So usually we don't want to take out the attention from what we're focusing on. It's another artist's thinking idea, because the question should not really uh, why did you paint? So yeah, when we see a painting and we focus on that, some detail stays there, and some artists want to talk about mm -hmm. it. Like, uh, Jamie Hogerbaum was mm -hmm. talking about how hard it was to paint some uh, faces on the stadium that were not that the camera was not focused on. Yeah. But also, painters choose a lot of. just not to pay attention to things that are photographed very clearly, and you see it's a clear uh, photo of the fence. Do I need the fence? Or do I, I'm not sure if I want the house. Mm -hmm. Even though many people like the house. Yeah. It's specific to you as an artist, like you, what you want your subject to be and what your focus is in the painting, too. And again, it's the, uh, what, a person was looking for mm -hmm. when photography. Only was looking for trees, and she did pay attention for other details that are really great looking, like these trees right here. Yeah, like there's extra trees. Like this tree right here. I love it, but I'm not sure I want to paint mm -hmm. it. Or even the houses, like, I don't know if I want to I can house. like a lot of things that doesn't have to go in my yeah. painting. All of that, yeah. so it's choose. So, you know, I would possibly just not show the whole thing. I would show some elements that might help painting. Um, so I do want to show uh, the brush stroke for the leaves, the colors mm -hmm. maybe, mm -hmm. here and there. And also I want to show a little tiny bit of, let's say it can be just brown. Yeah. And I don't have to show it all black. So I even can show it more visibly. So as an example, right here, that would be something like that. Again, you can see the size of the brush, and I would be able to just mix it with any, any color here and there, right? So I would see here this spot right here. So some people would not even paint the branches the way I do. Mm -hmm. They would just put this color here, then add black, and go like this around it, and then take cream and make something like that. Instead of having a definite uh, outline, and only yeah. then they would add the outline. So it's almost like you're painting in between what the outline would be. Like you don't need the outline because you're putting the detail inside. Mm -hmm. So they would receive something like that. But also the easiest way is to just plain black. With this tree, I'm not talking about the birches. Mm -hmm, yeah. That one you have to like start with a darker color and then go. So it's basically just black. And in this case, we don't even need to add anything because it's just black here. But brown leaves in the plant, a little tiny bit of leaves. So this area would be different from this area. So this area would have lighter shades in it, so it could be just brown. Can it be orange? Go yes. for it. Go for it. Experiment, and if you did already, 
the next time you do the same thing, it's not the same. As I said, brushes can be different. Can be same brush, exact same brush. Your brush that you bought years ago. And what would you what would you think about it afterwards? In a year, this brush might not Magic. work for me. Magic brush. It might not work for me like a year ago. It works for me now. Mm -hmm. Or this brush. I do not really use this much. Then I started mm. painting at the workshop. I don't have any other choice. And it works out great. Oh. So I would just say, uh, I will show little Yeah. Comments. So something like that. And then just going with brown on top. When I come for a close up. right here so what i have is just brown aces here my cat's here <laughs> i have brown and cat hair and it's in everything i paint i don't know how it gets there but it gets there so again we can start with orange make a tiny line here and there we could add brown into that cool yeah so it's just like you're filling out you're painting the bark uh, the same thing can be, again, we can add black on top of that, make it a little bit darker. But we still have something going on there that is lighter than just black. Mm -hmm. And about the leaves, we can start with black right here. So let me pick a good spot. So the top probably is the hardest because we have a little tiny bit of, wow, like just white spots. Mm -hmm. So you're just like kind of like moving your hand in like a sporadic motion to make the leaves then or? Uh, yeah. I don't think like I'm just kind of like going so here, random so motions. I did one direction mm -hmm. I, I can move different directions right away, but it, it's important direction the leaf goes and it can be really separated from others mm -hmm. but i do not define the shape of the leaf because that on that distance you cannot really see mm -hmm. them and then just adding oranges on the side other leaves around it so i do not really want dots here i would not like dots Mm. And just creating the shape here, so they're not. So I added a lot, right? Yeah, yeah. So I don't want to add any more. So I would be just working on top of the leaves instead of adding more leaves. Mm -hmm. Oh, so on top of adding like layering in color. So I would just add this. So instead of just adding white separately, mm -hmm. I would define the leaves that are there and would go on top of them instead of. So for some artists, that would be. I'm just painting black the leaves that are dark, and I'm paint orange and put it around. I would just mark all of them. It's just easier to focus this way for me. Mm -hmm. But again, I can take yellow. Even I don't see yellow there. I can just show that it can be done brighter, definitely, and it's not what you see there. It can mix in a little time. Oh, those colors are so fun. And as we go, we change the shape of the leaf. We change the direction. We add to them. So we can leave some of them black again. But am I getting the same shade as here yet? No. <laughs> no, yeah, you got to keep working on it. So we just keep working. It doesn't have to be from the first time. So we're just getting the shade that we like. And again, when we add the blues, again. So oh, I'm in here. Hi. <laughs> I'm just so hiding. When we're adding the blues, I actually work in a different way again. I do not settle for what I make for the first time usually. So it just doesn't happen. It's probably the process I'm mm -hmm. going through. And I usually prefer painting around and creating a better shape and then fixing the color then placing it right away and then around the blue with the contrast it the contrast it's easier to see where white is located and i can place a better white so it's just one of the options right it's beautiful the another way option it. would be uh, i can show it on the blue mm -hmm. so let's say i just take the blue first so i would just um 
best there, right? There are not too many of these here, right? So this is the blue I got. It's very simple. I can it's a great blue. Just something here. Mm. You just added a little bit of like a that warm white color, and now it's like nice clouds and such. Uh, I do not see it as clouds, but I do just not, wispy. Yeah, nice color. I do not. I never like one layer because mm -hmm. is you can still see. Mm -hmm. I like covering it more. So let's say I have. I can go with just color, which is maybe preferable by water artists and I can start from light here so I would say this just white just making dots mm -hmm. and always using something in between the layers because to I clean be cleaner. yeah here. so cleaning your colors off of your brush and in between and just keep adding brighter lighter so i can just keep adding lighter so you're adding leaves. in now like leaves that would be on top of the blue as a, the sky re like referencing mm -hmm. what it would look like on the sky then yeah so it's it just on very basic showing mm -hmm. which yeah that's great because it's just like you got the highlight of the leaf with that warm white and now it's interesting because now you're going like a white like a light to dark versus up here and you, you might like, like this dark one. better yeah and it's closer to what we're seeing there when mm -hmm. we add some browns yeah it looks it looks very similar to the picture there but it's true it's like what is your preference what do you what are you happier with when you have your painting do you and like it with yes, that technique? we can throw yellows in it's beautiful so this is way closer to what you see there, but also I do have orange, which I didn't add yet, so that would be the right impression. Nice. And then pop over here. I just painted my sky. <laughs> I painted my sky and I painted some grass. So now it's dry and it's ready for me to put this onto here. Um, it is a birch tree, as we were talking earlier. So it's very, very tiny bran branches. I almost said stalks. Stalks over the tree and <laughs> tree trunks. Um, but this, I was attracted to it because this beautiful, tall, like, yellow leafy crown. Whatever the tree part we call leaves. Is that that section? So I'm going to put it in there. Um, yeah, and I might do that little pathway because the pathway is very cute too. But I don't know if it'll have any friends. Maybe that tree bush in the background, that'll come with it. Mm -hmm. um, and I guess we can uh, go from here. Yeah. Uh, we'll work on what's left. And yeah. And we'll show the final result. Oh, yeah. The yeah, definitely. I'm going gonna, gonna to paint. Are you, you, you say you're going to keep painting? I'll keep painting, yeah, but paint. I think uh, that it would be a little bit boring. Ah, yeah, that's it's always, you know, <laughs> I gotta stick myself in here. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Well, why don't I, um, well, also, what I'll do, because uh, we've had that, that version, I'll move the camera down just to focus on my spot here to see the birch tree motion going on um, from a different angle. So you can watch me paint for a moment, and then we'll pop back on to Kate, mm -hmm. and then we'll say bye-bye. But first, y'all can watch me paint a tree. <laughs> Are you excited? Are you dizzy yet from how I'm with the camera here? Oops. Uh, I'd say uh, I try not to focus on the camera too much, because that would take all my focus out. Yeah, I know what you mean. Okay. Uh -huh, I just see your little fingers on the frame still. <laughs> okay. Hi. Um, great. Well, I guess I'm going to start with my trunk, my tree trunk. Um, yeah, so this is all dry here, which is nice. I'm going to need yellows for sure. This. Pumpkin, apricot, apricot, 
color. It's like hard it's to squeeze out, but it's possible. possible. But it's worth it if you can get it. <laughs> Good to know. We have daffodil yellow. Is there two daffodil yellows? <gasps> Sun yellow. Oh my gosh, there's so many yellows. I'm probably like a brownish. Oh, territorial beige. That's a great name. All right. <laughs> Would you recommend I like block out where I'm gonna put my trunk first with like a black or a darker color? Uh, there is some black in. What about this? Oh, okay, yeah. Do that first, and then just like maybe yeah. swipe some black. Got it. You're so smart. So I might just be that individual that gets a new palette rather than wiping that one. For the sake of the magic of television, I have cleaned my palette. I'm gonna block out my tree first. And then I'm just gonna make sure that everything's good on the framing. More or less perfect, perfect. I guess I'll need like a modern one. And it's pretty, they're pretty small. I don't think I'm gonna actually need that many. I think we called it friendly, but then we came up to all trees are friendly. All so trees are friendly. Oh, That's the title of this piece. <laughs> oh, jeez. Okay. Um, okay, so I'm just blocking out. Oh, wow, I was having a great time and I was stressing painting for an audience. So I don't think I'll need to go very high because look at the tree here. You see, it's all like the leaves are there. Aspen. I always get those two confused. So we have both here in Manitoba. I think both those colors are actually very, very um, common trees. So if anybody's watching and has a lot of tree information, let us know. What's your favorite? What's your favorite tree, Kate? Just thinking about bushes right now. Well, that's okay. Bushes are the bush tree. <laughs> <laughs> Just thinking about bushes. That's fair. I'm gonna call this dancing aspens. <laughs> so it looks funny that I'm just creating this like line up there. Um, but I'm gonna have a part of the tree be poking out like it is in the picture. Um, so I don't think I'm gonna need to draw the whole piece in the background. Like, because I'm, my tree has a lot of foliage on it. So I don't wanna put like too many lines in here. I might just like stamp my really crusty brush around. That was a tip I learned from Teresa, Teresa Taylor. Crusty brushes are your friends when you're doing foliage. Uh -huh. It'll just like, you don't wet it, and you keep it really dry, you just stamp it around. Okay, so maybe like another tall line here. My picture looks probably so great right now. Like, what are they painting? It's a tree! <laughs> it's gonna be a magic. 
magic of tree making where you just think, I, I don't know, it looks like a scary spirit that I've painted on here. <laughs> the way it's, um, <laughs> I'm just adding a little bit more layering of the white. This is such a great white. I love this color. I'm trying to make the bases a little bit wider because I know it is a tree after all. The nice thing about aspen trees or willows is they're very thin and their like, trunks aren't that wide. And their leaves, they just twiddle, oh, twiddle, twist and twiddle in the wind. Ooh, I should have a nature show talking about trees, but like with the same amount of information I currently have. So, <laughs> so it's just me guessing. <laughs> this tree. base of my aspens marked out. But yeah, the aspen tree have really, really thin um, branches inside, so it's going to be really nice that I don't have to make them go up too, too high. I think it's also really good if you're drawing trees to like, exactly how Kate you're doing it. Oh my goodness, I just looked at the Kate's gorgeous. Um, how uh, your, I mean, understanding like the shape and stuff of the trees without the leaves because um, it really helps you know where you're painting them too. I kind of just made it look like it's one big tree trunk that's separated. <laughs> you need to fix them now. Oh God, there's just so many. It's hard to focus on one thing and it just, a little bit, Hard. When you do the live, I find mm -hmm. it, it just takes focus completely out of the painting. So it gives you this benefit of making a non-thinking painting. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> that's the other thing that I had in the background. I was like, yeah, I'm not thinking at all with this. This is great. I'm masking it out of my bush right now because, Kate, you were talking about how much you like the bushes, right? Now. Maybe I will make a lilac bush. Oh, I'm going to make a little lilac bush here for you. Aww. So yeah, well in, in this picture there is a, a little bush there, so I thought that would be nice. Except I would like to mask it out in like a darker color because I want to benefit from having like that shadow. However, if I'm making it too big right now or a different shape, it's going to be a lot easier covering this white than it is covering up. So that's kind of my intention. Just leaving the leaves black mm -hmm. and white, we can add a tiny bit of white of white cream without any other colors added. I think that's great too. We'll see how that turns. I want the pathway I'm gonna leave it right now I'm just gonna do my trees because what if I did I don't like how the pathway turns out don't want it don't want it to be too greedy <laughs> um okay great so now my little aspens um to make that pattern like on like the aspen trees or the willow trees really want to make sure that it's dry paint you're using because you don't want to strip too much Thing, but you take like black, little little bit of black. You can take some other colors too that would be nice on there. Like there's like maybe when the birch is peeling off. Like I'm kind of confusing them with birch trees and aspen trees. But like when the birch um, bark comes off, there can be like little flecks of like leaves and other colors. Um, I feel like 
that's what it's going to. Oh, right, I wanted this color. <laughs> okay, so I have my little palette here, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the same brush that I was using that kind of was like that angled brush, and I'm going to make sure it's quite dry and just like tap corners of color onto it. And then give it like a little tap to see if it would work and how that would go. It's quite flat, so I'm just gonna like give it a little tap. I'm just gonna start from one side. Try and get like the healing of the dots one. I'm gonna probably have to add more white. pieces and then take photos and, and share them with you all because um, it's always you know you don't want to rush a rush a painting or also like yeah yeah you need a break from it it's important to take breaks so yes I'm already ready for uh, yeah Kate's ready I can never paint like some artists do and mm -hmm. say it works for them easily. No. And you know, I believe whatever works the easiest for you, mm -hmm. that's you embrace it because yeah. people never go with what's harder. Mm -hmm. I believe mm -hmm. that people do not want to push too much because yeah. there are enough things we uh, push in uh, yeah, it's awesome. during the day. So I would say when it comes to art, we usually choose something that is not pushing us yeah. anymore. So definitely we pick something that is relaxing enough. Mm -hmm. All right, so I, I'm gonna just do an example of how I'm gonna do that foliage and I'm gonna work on the branches and the bottom of it later. Um, but it's very, very similar to how, um, you know, I loaded up my brush very delicately I'm gonna do the same with um, this dry brush that we were talking about, like having kind of things in dry brushes. I always prefer dry brush, but when I say always, what does it mean? What does it mean, yeah. Several last years or what? Since I started teaching workshops, because it doesn't give me the opportunity to actually sit down and control this because I stopped controlling oh. things as much. <laughs> no! Oh, it's okay. We'll use it. We'll use it. <laughs> this is not <laughs> enough layer. We can okay, good. Use it for the wall. Yeah. I was squeezing it and nothing was coming. <laughs> no worries. I need to get a new one like this because this one is. It's very nice. And then what is it? The, the color? Apricot? No, the, the brand name. Oh, it, it's Apple just Barrel. The Apple Barrel. You can get it from where? Walmart? Oh, is it Walmart? Yeah. Or is it. Michaels and Walmart has that maybe. I'm going to take just like a fluffier brush that I have and mix a bit of a darker yellowy orange color to start. Kind of looks like blue, um, but that's fine. So like a gold. When I my picture, <laughs> I do not want to make it look like a challenge. I make it look for myself personally. I make it simpler for myself. Mm -hmm. I don't want to say it's too complicated and let's start from this and I'm getting all that. I don't want to make a plan when I want to spend on like this much time on a painting and I don't want to over focus. Because mm -hmm. over focusing can just knock you down and just tell you you don't want to paint anymore. Yeah, which is taking the fun out of it. And again, someone wants to push a little bit or a lot, I don't. I am relaxing when I paint and I don't want to uh, be this on the way. Too much thinking that is not not to the point. Like, I don't want it there. I want to actually just paint. <laughs> so I usually would not go to Wikipedia and research on the titles mm. for me or whatever this tree is called. I just like it. So it comes from, uh, 
again, the photographer usually, some photographers do like research mm -hmm. when they photograph. And, uh, I, I usually just take a photograph or something I like, looking like. I might not even know the exact name of each of the flowers there. And usually yeah, I just you, you're attracted to something and you take pictures of that. So the squirrel would be just a squirrel. I don't know which squirrel is that. And <laughs> just, yeah. 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 Hope you're enjoying hearing me stab like a hand. <laughs> so yeah, I am tapping it in here, and then if I get a little bit too much on there, I'll tap it off. But then just. So this is kind of a, a, the other technique of adding on foliage and leaves than Kate's doing. So Kate's doing it one by one, and I'm doing it where other people have done it with like fan brushes this way too, where you're just stamping on your color um, with like a dry brush or something that'll like kind of give you a bit of a different pattern than just like a dot of a circle that you can see at the top there. Um, just kind of happening accidentally because I was stamping too hard quickly, which is the killer of creativity. Don't go fast. Take your time. Well, if you're up to creativity, like boxing your emotions in the canvas, that's then different. That's, that's, it. <laughs> that's different, right? That's but it's not, uh, it's not the type of creativity that we mm -hmm. are talking here about. Yeah. Well, that is kind of giving you the idea for um, how to do the treetops. Focus on my structure of the shape of my tree. Um, but one last pop into Kate's piece. Ooh. <laughs> so just for you guys, don't have to do the same blue sky as here. Right mm -hmm. So I can just add. Well, it's awesome how you have like the canopy with... around too. Yeah. That's great. And then here's. Okay, a... I'm taking it out of the context of Winnipeg. Mm -hmm. Even as called Winnipeg trees, just because they're photographed mm -hmm. in Winnipeg, I'm just taking the basic idea and I'm not taking anything else. There. No. So, so this is what I'm stopping on. I'm not aiming for the stars. There are no stars here. Well, There's some stars. Yeah, we we can't see them yet. We can't see them yet. But really, really cool how it. And we'll 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 photograph some some pictures and we'll share them too. Um, and then a bit of mine. Got this beautiful greenish brown yellow color Ooh. and I'm putting it on there but you can see my little my little blobs at the top so I need to stamp them stamp them out <laughs> but we'll keep working on that and then I'm gonna have a lilac bush on the side mm -hmm. but and then making it into what I don't know we'll see it'll be beautiful <laughs> it'll be a lovely a lovely place that I want to visit maybe I'll have a little park bench that I'll put beside it and, and then nice the next week uh, we'll be talking about Rihanna's art Ooh, lovely I gave you a sneak peek on that so I don't want to show you again because you have to watch next week um but yeah I think that's that's good that's all thank you for joining us we're very happy to do our painting here with you and hang out have a lovely one. Say bye-bye. See you later. See you next week for more painting.